Okay, so what do we got going on here? Well, obviously this is some sort of algebra equation, but uh, kind of technically or formally we would call this a rational equation. And it's good to know the names of these things because, you know, in mathematics, names, you know, and descriptions, they have meanings. So, and you should know that. So rational, okay, this is a rational equation. It's an equation because obviously we have an equal sign. And it's a rational equation because the word rational in algebra or mathematics basically uh, describes fraction. Okay, now technically it's a fraction made up of polynomials of the numerator and denominator, but effectively we have some fractions going on here and we have an equation. So the word for fraction in algebra is rational. Okay, now again, I mean, I could be a little bit more specific about that, but that's what I want you to think. Okay, so you've got uh, a rational equation and we need to uh, solve this, right? Or that's the whole goal for this uh, video. And like anything in, um, in life and in mathematics, there's generally more than one way to do things. And what you want to do is always take the path of least resistance. Take the, you know, the most direct path to solve a problem, the most efficient path, right? So there's a couple of different approaches you can do here. And if you um, aren't paying attention, you could end up taking a more long and painful way. So again, like my little title says here, can be easy if you do this. We're going to want to talk about exactly what you do or what to do to solve this type of equation. Now, I'm going to get into this uh, precisely in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, let me just very briefly tell you about my math help program. Basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're taking any kind of exam, that has math on it. Examples would be the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, ACCUPLACE or CLEP exam, teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam. You get the idea, right? There's a ton of exams out there. And uh, somebody thinks math's pretty important because math shows up everywhere on a wide variety of exams. So I can help you prepare for those exams. I also have a great homeschool uh, program. So if you homeschool, you definitely want to you know, check out my uh, homeschool program. And then obviously help those of you having a tough time in your current math courses. Now, if you are a math student, I must stress the importance of taking notes. I've been teaching math for decades. If your notes are less than awesome, okay, you need to improve your notes, all right? This is a real common weak area for students. So if you're struggling in math, look at your notes. That's the first thing you want to do. Are you taking notes? Are your notes good? Because if they're not, you need to improve these. But uh, you can use my notes uh, in the meantime if you want to. Uh, to study from. So I'm going to leave links to my notes in the description of this video and of course to my learning program as well. All right. Now, if you think you can solve this problem, I think that's uh, the best way to use this video. Just, you know, pause the video, go ahead and work on it for a little bit and see what you can come up with. But this right here, what we're talking about is extremely important uh, to understand if you're going to be successful in algebra and in any type of algebra course. Uh, and typically this is maybe more like an algebra one level, but if you're taking college algebra, algebra two, algebra one doesn't make a difference. You're going to need to know how to do this. And there's a little bit of a little bit of an additional twist to this particular type of problem. So we're going to cover that as well. So let's get into this. Uh, now, what are some approaches? Let me actually get back up here because I don't want to show you my solutions right away. One, one thing you could do here, right? And you, you know, you might be thinking, well, here I need to add these two things up. So maybe your eyes drawn. Let me add up these two things, and then I'll uh, incorporate it with this side of the equation. So that's you know basically you know logical you know to say that like okay I'm gonna you know I got these LCD or the, I got this um, denominators. Let me figure out the LCD and or add these up, and then I can kind of you know try to figure out how I'm gonna solve for x. So if you're doing that, that's that's logical. However, that's not the best way to do this problem. Okay. The best way to do this problem is to understand the following in algebra. If you have an equation and it has fractions uh, like alarm bells need to go off. Okay. Uh, equations with fractions. You always want to be thinking about the lowest common denominator. Okay. So here, obviously we have some fractions or rational expressions to be more technical about it. So this, uh, Denominator is x minus 3. This one is x plus 3. And then here we have x squared minus 9. Well, we need to understand how to find the lowest common denominator um, amongst this. All right, now that's a whole separate discussion. 
and that involves factoring. I have a great video on that in my uh, algebra playlist on how to find the LCD, not only of numbers, I have a lot of videos on that, but how to find the LCD uh, when we're talking about variable expressions. This is a skill, okay? So the first thing is you need to know how to find the LCD, right? And that's a separate skill that you must know how to do. But uh, let's take a look at what we have here. So x minus 3 x plus 3, and now x squared minus 9, I can factor as x minus 3 times x plus 3. So the lowest common denominator, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to look at each one of these factors, okay, so I have x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 3, and x plus 3. What we need to do is just multiply each of the unique factors. So x minus 3, x minus 3, you only need to show uh, x minus 3 once in our LCD. Okay, then have an x plus 3 here and x plus 3, we only need to show this one time, not, we don't need to multiply by itself twice. So the LCD is x minus 3 times x plus 3, and we want to leave it in factor form. All right, we don't want to uh, multiply it, okay? All right, so now that we have the LCD, what do we do with it? All right, again, when you see an equation in algebra, okay, and it has fractions in it, you want to be thinking LCD because the LCD, once you have it, what you can do is you can multiply the entire equation by the LCD. In other words, I'm going to take this LCD, I'm going to multiply it by this, by this, and by this, but the, all the terms in the equation. And when I do that, I'm going to be basically cross-canceling each one of these uh, factors, and I'm going to end up with an equation that has no fractions in it. Okay, This is going to make our life so much easier. All right. Now, if you think you could do this, I kind of pretty much indicated how to do, you know, how to set this problem up. I think this might be a good little um, pop quiz at this point. Okay, so here's the LCD. I already gave it to you. X minus 3 times X plus 3. We want to take uh, this entire equation and multiply uh, the, uh, by the LCD, which is this. Okay, now when you do that, things are going to start cross canceling. You're going to end up with an equation that doesn't have um, any uh, fractions in it. Okay. So if you want to try that, pause the video and see if you can take the problem from this point. I would certainly encourage you to do that. But let's go ahead and see this now. Okay. So it is a lot of writing. You can see here I'm kind of squeezing in my LCD. Remember, my LCD is x plus 3 times x minus 3. And here's the equation. Now notice over here the denominator I have that factored, okay? Over here, it's the denominator is x squared minus 9, uh, but I'm uh, going to write x squared minus 9. I'm going to just have that in its factored form, okay? All right, so now let's walk through and make sure you're, you understand how to uh, multiply uh, with the LCD. So here, I have the LCD. I'm going to multiply by this. So this is x minus 3. So what I can do, this x minus 3, and this x minus 3 cross cancel. So that leaves me with just x plus 3 times 1 or x plus 3. Okay. So if you're confused on any of this stuff, I have a ton of videos on this in my algebra uh, playlist. Or you maybe just want to sign up for my algebra course. It's up to you. All right. So here we have x plus 3 and x plus 3. They're going to cross cancel. I'm going to be left with x minus 3. And then over here, let's go and erase this because this is an important part. We want to make sure you understand this. I'm going to multiply this entire thing by this. If you're not under understanding how the fractions work, then you're going to have to maybe look at some simpler problems. But here I have x plus 3 times x minus 3. When I multiply by this, guess what happens? All these guys cross cancel with these guys. I'm just left with 10. So now look at the results of doing that. Super uh, nice little problem. I have x plus 3 plus x minus 3 is equal to 10. And now I could just solve this, right? Look at that. The plus 3 minus 3, they cross cancel or they take each other out. Now that's going to be 0, so I'm left with x plus x is 2x is equal to 10. Divide both sides of the equation by 2. Hopefully you understand that. And you get the answer x is equal to 5. Now, if you got this correct on your own, I must give you a awesome... Uh, happy face with a good old-fashioned 1984 um, Ultra uh, Mohawk, okay, with extra hairspray. Anyways, that's a nice, you did a good job, okay? However, I'm not going to give you an A plus or 100% because you're not done yet, okay? You're like, wait, what are you talking about? I got the right answer. You, you give me my little happy face and everything else. Well, not quite, okay? Uh, because 
this may or may not be the answer. Now you might be saying to yourself, hmm, what are you talking about here, Mr. Math Man? You're kind of playing with my emotions. Well, here, this is exactly what I'm talking about. When you're solving rational equations, and I've followed up on this, there's a lot of additional videos that I've done uh, in my play, um, in my algebra playlist on my YouTube channel and in my algebra courses, of course. Anytime you're multiplying both sides of the equation and there's a variable involved, like we're doing right here, okay, you can generate something called extraneous roots, extraneous roots or extra roots, extra solutions. This is a whole separate topic in and of itself, okay, but you need to be very mindful of that, okay? For example, let's just do this. Here is a nice, lovely equation. X is equal to 3. Can you solve that equation? Okay, what's X equal to 3? Uh, it's about the easiest problem in the universe, right? Well, isn't the answer just X is equal to 3? All right, in other words, this X must be 3 because 3 is equal to 3 is the answer. X is equal to 3 and only 3, positive 3, okay? So, Let's get cute with this problem. We're like, yeah, let's multiply both sides of the equation uh, by x. Okay. Oh, so that gives me x squared is equal to 3x, both sides. Right? It's like kind of what I'm doing over here. Now, if I take this equation and I solve it, I'm going to go x squared. I'll move this uh, minus 3x over, set it equal to 0. Now I have two factors. I'm going to factor out an x. So that's going to give me x minus 3 is equal to 0. And when I solve this equation, okay, if you don't know what I'm doing here, I'm factoring, I'm, I'm going to get x is equal to 0, and I'm going to get x is equal to 3. Now I have two solutions. Remember, my original equation here was x equals 3. There's only one answer. It's 3. Okay, that's my right answer. But guess what? When I multiply both sides of the equation by x, I got this other crazy answer, x is equal to 0. That's an extra solution. Because 0 is not equal to 3, okay? If I replace this original equation with this solution, this is wrong, okay, for the original solution. So you, you can see when you're multiplying both sides of the equation by variables, you can introduce these things called extraneous solutions. It's not like a little trivial little side topic either. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. No, no, this comes up <laughs> quite frequently, okay? And if you don't do this next part of this problem, your teacher is not going to give you a happy face, all right? They might give you a, like, that kind of face. You know, I don't think they're going to, you know, I wasn't a mean teacher. Okay? I wouldn't give you a, you're wrong if you just gave me right here, but I'd like, you're incomplete, all right? So what do we need to do? Well, we, we're definitely on the right track. We multiply by the LCD. We got this problem, but this is only a potential answer. So the way we need uh, to confirm whether this is a fact, the solution is we got to test it in our original equation. So here's our original equation. All these x's here, I'm going to plug in 5, okay, for it, because that's what I'm thinking x is equal to, x is equal to 5. But now we have to confirm that. We have to make sure it's not an extraneous solution. So I'm going to plug in 5 for all these x's, and I'm going to do all the number crunching. And you can see how we did that here. I got uh, 1 half, all right, 5 minus 3, it's 1 half. Uh, over 5 plus 3, it's 1 eighth, and then 10 over 25 minus 9. You can just see the lovely number crunching here. So uh, 1 half plus 1 eighth, 1 half is the same thing as 4 eighths, okay? So the left-hand side, 4 eighths plus 1 eighth is equal to 5 eighths. And then here, this 10 over 25 minus 9, that's going to be 10 over 16, right? 25 minus 9 is 16. And then I can reduce this fraction, and that's equal to 5 eighths. So we confirmed, okay, because the left-hand side is, a fact, equal to the right-hand side, and the number that, uh, you know, created that solution, you know, balanced equation, was indeed 5. So 5 is, in fact, the solution to this rational equation, okay? So, again, you know, uh, when it comes to mathematics and an algebra, it could be the easy way or the hard way, okay? Now, the easy way, all right, is not necessarily like, you know, super easy. You can just do this in one or two quick steps. But it's far better than a long, difficult way where you end up, you know, not really completing the problem because you don't really understand extraneous solutions, etc. Okay, so my job with these videos really 
my passion, not my job, because I do this willingly and it's not work to me, is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. So if you understand rational equations a bit better and, and, and the concept of the LCD and extraneous roots and all that stuff, well, then I think I, you know, you might want to consider smashing that like button. Okay. And if, uh, you know, you do smash that like button, you might as well just go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos ranging from basic to advanced mathematics, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.